Jeremiah 18, starting at verse number one. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, the Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the potter's shop. Your verbiage may say house. And I will speak to you there. See, God is telling a lot of us to go to a certain places. And that's where he's going to meet you at. But you go on every other place instead of the place he told you to go. He told you, mouth, you go here, and that's where I'm going to talk to you at. In the meantime, shut your mouth and go do what I told you to do. See, many of you, my God, you're trying to get God to speak to you over here. When God said, go down to the potter's house, and that's where I'm going to meet you at. If God said, go here, he don't mean go there. See, it's all about choices. We make the choice, but we don't get to dictate the consequences. So he said, go, amen. He said, go down to the potter's house, and I'm going to meet you there. Jeremiah said, so I did as he told. I did as he told me and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. Mm. So he crushed. Look at your neighbor say, crushing gives the power. So he crushed it, talking about the vessel, into a lump of clay again and started all over. Then the Lord gave me this message. Verse 6 says, O Israel, can I not do to you, talking to the people now, the nation, as this potter has done to this clay, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that we get to take time and teach. I thank you for the series, Father God, that we're getting ready to start. So just lay the foundation, Father God. And if you allow us to come back next Sunday, we'll pick it up there, if it be thy will. But Father God, I thank you for the people of God. I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. Bless them. They are victorious. As I have always prophesied because the scripture exhorts me to. They are kings as males and they are queens as females. According to your constitution, we are kings and queens. We are joint heirs. We have legal access to everything that the kingdom has. Thank you for allowing us as the going off of Christ Church family, my God, at 205 South Sheridan, to do business in your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you speak to those, Father God, that is online looking, Father God. Touch their heart. Save somebody's soul, Father God. And when you save them, Father God, let them write in a call in and say, I gave my life to Christ today, my God, by way of the social media, Lord. I thank you for the favor of God that's resting upon this ministry. Father God, I speak a commanded blessing. I decree and declare, my God, Psalms 133 over this ministry, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We are blessed going in and we are blessed going out, Father God. Father God, make the people get envious because we are so blessed. Blessings will attract envy. Blessing will attract haters, Lord. So bless us so Father God where people will get envy and want to come be a part of what you're doing here at 205 South Sheridan Father God in the name of Jesus I decree that let the church say amen Woo, my God you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I said God bless us so that it can provoke envy where people want to come and say I need to be a part of that body because them people are extremely blessed over there you should have been shouting for that right there somebody give God a hand for that man Amen. Yes, we clap. Yes, we shout. Yes, we stand. Yes, we worship. I give God the glory. As I've always said, I stood up in the club and I waited all night to get in the club. I ain't got no problem with praising God. I ain't got no problem with losing my voice, my God, to worship the King of Kings, my God. We sang all this worldly stuff. We get involved in all We never make no excuses about the stuff we did in the world. Please don't come in the kingdom and begin to make excuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you couldn't find a parking, parking spot, my God, I'm going to go over your head, Pastor Chan. Some of y'all, 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 y'all know about Coco's and Miss Victy's. Uh, we, amen, Mr. Jackson. We drive all around town, trying to, all around the parking lot, waiting for somebody to leave the club so we can get their spot. But let's pull up at the church, my God. If you can't find a spot, you going home. Uh, see, we put more emphasis on flesh than we do spirit. We make no excuses about flesh, but we make all the excuses about spirit. Never get tired of worshiping the king. All I did this morning at five this morning when the king woke me up is thank God for the activities of my limbs. It's good to have hands. It's good to be able to walk. It's good to be able to talk. It's good to be able to see. Oh, my God. Sometimes we become ungrateful for the little things. You won't miss it until it's gone. Trust me, the two arms you got, let God allow one to be taken off and then see how you'll miss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get in your car with cold air. My God, you'll thank God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The blessing is in. The blessing is in. 
Don't forget where you come from. God uses many images to describe his relationship to his people. He speaks of the shepherd and the sheep relationship. The husband and the wife relationship. Mm -hmm. A father and his children, just to name a few. All of these are wonderful and teach us many valuable lessons about life, about ourselves, and the Lord. However, while we, like sheep, are protected and provided for by the shepherd, and as a wife, we are loved without condition by the husband, and like children, we are constantly under the Father's loving care. There is another aspect, though, of our lives that needs to be factored into the equation. After all, church and guests, Jesus did not save us for our, from our sins just for, so we could go to heaven. He didn't, and avoid hell. He saved our soul so that, oh my God, we might be actively involved in his kingdom yeah. here on earth. Perhaps one of the greatest portraits of God and his people is the analogy of the potter and the clay. God was speaking to me yesterday, even this morning, and there's so many different images, so many different ways I want to go, my God, but I didn't want to make it too much, so I'm just going to take my time and lay this foundation uh, and pray that God bless you. So, Father, we thank you for the word. Bless your people. Father God, I decrease so you can increase. Father God, speak truth. We know that truth hurts, but truth also helps. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. I want to talk and title this sermon today, Let God Put His Hands on You. Uh, in order for God to put His hands on you, you need to submit and surrender. So that you can have a vibrant, live, exciting relationship with God. Yes, it gets difficult at times. Yes, it gets hard at times. But it's still exciting. It's still vibrant. And it's a lot of good times on this side. Y'all got a saying? I got a saying. It's good on this side. It's good on this side. Many of us probably would never make that declaration in faith. Because it's hard for it to be good on the right side when you're standing like this in God's kingdom. Either you're on his side or you're on the opposite side. Jesus said either you for me or you are against me. So in order for your life to take on its full measure, you got to allow God. Come here, Pastor. Stand right here, son. You got to allow God to You got to allow God to put his hands on you. And so if my son moved to the left, because the right hand always symbolizes God, one choice. Now he's out of position. Now God's hands ain't on him. Because you come to church, God's hands still not. Because you need God's hands to be on you Monday, Tuesday, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock at night, Thursday, Friday. So when you make a choice to not spend time reading your constitution, not spending time in prayer, my God, and you choose to stay bitter and angry and all that stuff, God still got his hands on you, but it's limited now. Because God said in order for you to be forgiven, you have to forgive. So therefore, when you submit to the commandment, then God put his hands back on you. When you choose to rebel, those who know to do right and yet choose to do wrong, it, to him it is sin. God don't bless sin, so what God will do is set you over there, vessel unto you. And he'll put his hands on somebody else until you decide to surrender. Let's give God a hand. So up on the point number one is the potter and his mission. Now I'm going to take my time and teach this, church, because I want you to get this, because it's so critical at this day and time. Uh, because I can assure you, and I'm not casting no stone, but all around the nation, God ain't got, he, 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 he wants to put his hands on people, but we keep God at bay. Yeah. We keep God handcuffed. We limit what God wants to do in our life. 
The kingdom wants to have full manifestation and full effect in a man or woman's life. My God, so when we make choices and decisions to do what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it, and where we want to do it, my God, we limit the activity of God's hands on our life. And so the potter in the natural has a mission. So do the heavenly potter has a mission. Do y'all got me so far? So up on the point number one, write down the potter's intention. The potter's intention. The potter has a single purpose, my God. He plans to take clay and produce vessels. He wants to make vessels that will reap a profit. That's the natural side. Just stay with me. That will be found useful mm -hmm, and will bring honor unto him. This is God's intention as well, family. He excels, my God, God does, in taking clay and transforming it transforming it into his grace, into his vessels of honor. I mean, transform it by his grace, my God, into vessels of honor and to his glory. Let me say that right there. Just like this natural potter takes a physical piece of clay and begins to formulate it because he already have, a, he already have an image my God, or would he want this lump of clay, oh my God, to become. He already got an image, the natural potter, or what he wanted to look like and how he wanted to take shape. That's the natural. Then you bring it up to the spirit. As I taught y'all, my God, my God, come on, pastor, come on. As I taught many of you, I'm going to do this demonstration again, stand right here. So what God does, stay with me now, because the potter in the natural already have an image of what he wants this vessel to look like. Y'all with me so far? He already, wanted, he already know how he want to shape. He already know how you need to put his hands on. He know, I already know how he need to spin the wheel and so forth. You bring it up to God. And so God, as I taught y'all a week or so ago, this is your destiny. Then God goes right back over here. Your destiny was already created when he thought of you. This is you. So he creates you for that. So my God, so my God, because he created you and me for that destiny, he got to put his hands on her. And so, my God, while we on our way to our destiny, we should stay up under the umbrella, the covering, my God, of the Father so he keep his hands on us because he know just how to shape us. He know just how to mold us. He know which child to sin. He know when to drop us in the fire, when to take us out the fire. He know when to keep us in circumstances, when to remove the circumstance. He know how to remove stones out the way, roll away the stone, my God, so God can move. So, God, you on your way to your destiny because that was created before he created you. That was created before he created you. That's why on your way to your destiny, the mistakes that we make don't surprise surprise God. Oh my God, when we cuss somebody out or we do something he's supposed to do, that don't surprise God because God created you for that right there. And so God understand that you're working at your salvation on your way to your destiny. But here's what we make the mistake at. It's hard to reach that, my God. Oh my God, when God ain't got his hands on your life along your way to that. Oh my God, so when you make the mistake to come from up under God's protection, my God, it's hard to reach and maximize your potential as well as reach your destiny. So you got to understand, thank you, Pastor. My God, you got to understand that God is trying to keep his hands on you to prepare you for this right here. Because if he give you this without the preparation, write this down, process always leads to victory. Process. There's a process that the natural potter is trying to do to get the results of this vase. And there's a process that God is trying to take you on. Don't you know you don't start living until you operate in your purpose? When you get to your destiny and you start serving your destiny to the world, when you start serving your gifts and your talents to the world, then you start living. The Bible says in the book of Colossians, we taught last Wednesday, my God, that your life and my life is hidden in Christ. Your life and my life is hidden in Christ. So what that says is you don't start living until you get in Christ. Many people in the churches all around the country and even people in the world is just existing. They doing routine. They not living. That's why it takes so long for us to get excited when we come in the house of the Lord. We got to pump and prime you for an hour before you even lift your hand one time. You're just existing. Do you got any reason to be excited about God? And so the potter, the heavenly potter, my God, is trying to keep, he wants his hands on you because he's trying to prepare you, please don't miss that, for your destiny. And so therefore, along the way, it's called, Bishop T.D. Jays called it, the lessons you learn along the way. There is some lessons right now that don't feel good. There are some mistakes and, change, and things that God has done in your life that you don't, I don't understand. But it's all part of what God is doing in your life to prepare you for your destiny. Yeah. 
That's why I called it, my God, giving God the glory. My God, let God put his hands on you. I don't know about y'all, but I need God's hands on me. Because if God's hand is touching me, if God's hand is touching my marriage, if God's hand is touching my children, if God's hand is touching my grandchildren, if God's hand is touching this ministry, my God, it's going to be okay. Uh, the danger is when his hands ain't no longer touching nothing. Oh, my God, that's the danger. Make sure that you, let, you allow God to do your choices and my choices to keep his hands on you. Oh, my God, it's dangerous to remove yourself from up under the protection of the Father. Church don't keep the, God's hands on you. Relationship keeps God's hands on you. I just don't need them from 11 to 1. You probably need them. Well, we all need them more on Monday at 8 o'clock when we break out of here to go to work. We need to show nothing to need God's hands on our life. So the natural potter as well as the spiritual potter has an intent, has a mission. They're trying to accomplish something that they have already seen. God is a generational thinker. That's why I don't nothing surprise him. He created your destiny. He created you for your destiny. That's why he already knows what you're going to become. That's why he specializes in taking broken people that the world wrote off. Because they don't see what God sees. That's why the second greatest man, commandment is to love thyself as thy neighbor. You don't know what your neighbor Your neighbor may be acting plumb crazy. She or he may be tripping. Your kids may be tripping. Your husband and wife may be tripping. You don't know what them people are going to become. That's why the Bible says, Pastor Madeline, never judge a thing before it's time. Many people judge me and still do. My God, nobody thought Juju would be doing what Juju doing today, giving God the glory. Uh, they, uh, they, all they know is my former life, my God. But God had a plan for this former junkie. God had a plan for this former Gangster Billy Melvin, my God, it was already created for the foundations of the world. Couldn't let people write you off because of your past. You have a destiny. I can't get nobody to say that right there. God trying to keep his hands on you because he's trying to mold you and shape you for what he wants you to do in life. Oh, I said I wasn't going to get too excited. I want to teach the gospel. But some of y'all need to understand that, my God, you cannot accept. And you have not, you cannot, you will not, thank you, Holy Ghost, accept that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. That God has plans for you. That God has a destiny for you. That God has people that are assigned to you on your journey to bless you. God has unexpected blessings that you didn't even pray for assigned on your journey. He got people that is assigned to bless you. My God, on your way to fulfilling what God has called. Yo, that's why I tell you, your deliverance is connected to somebody you don't even know it. That's why you got to be careful for those that's for us that's struggling with all these hangups and habits. Somebody got a key to unlock your prison that you're in. Are y'all with me so far? So therefore, the Heavenly Father wants to bring glory. Now, don't you know as a Christian, when you accept Christ, your number one goal should be is not just to get to heaven, but to be effective while you're on earth, to allow your life to, get God, to give God the glory. Yeah. And now that you're saved, now let God use your life to bring glory to the kingdom. I'm not talking about the kingdom just in heaven. Allow God to use your life now to help somebody else come out of darkness and come into the light. So you must use your life, my God, as an opportunity to advance God's kingdom. Are you with me so far? Jesus saves a sinner by his grace. Oh, this is a marvelous work, my God, as I studied in depth, my God. My God, then he begins the process of changing him. He saved you, then he starts the process of changing you and I. After you accept Christ, after he sent the Spirit after you to arrest you, come on, Apostle Paul, the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, then God starts the process of transforming you. Changing you. You're saved, now won't you let the potter put his hands on you to transform you. So that your life, my God, external could bring glory Internal, eternal. Are you with me so far? Are you with me so far? And so God, my God, after he saved you, he had the man, okay, I need to save him. And now I need to transform him. A lot of people ain't going to believe that he saved. A lot of people ain't going to believe that she changed. But God know what he's doing. Because he got his hands on you. Are you with me so far? And so a lot of us is frustrated because we don't understand that God has saved you. And now he's trying to transform you. So if you don't submit to the process... If you try to serve the God of the process the way you want to serve him, it frustrates you. It don't frustrate God. It may vex God, but it don't frustrate God. Yeah. Oh, my God, my God, my God. And so, therefore, you and I got to submit after you get saved to the transforming process. Yes, Lord. 
When you have a perception of what you think this thing is supposed to be and how it's supposed to go, because you are basing and formulating your thought process from the world and not from the Constitution, all you got to do is read the Bible. God will show you and tell you and reveal to you how the process of transformation is supposed to go. My God, and when you try to figure this thing out, my God, about, mm, from, from the world and from people that used to be in church and people that it is church, in church, but not living what they profess to be. See, many of us, my God, don't understand the transforming process because we have bad poor models mm -hmm. before us That's real. That's and so therefore we think it's okay my God to live any kind of way as long as I go to church and scratch that off of my to-do list yeah, yeah, yeah. but you got to fashion your life according to the transforming power of the king the only way the process of transformation is going to feel good notice I said feel good because you're going to have you're going to get discouraged I get discouraged my God, you're going to get frustrated. I get frustrated. My God, you're going to get, you're going to doubt sometime. I doubt sometime. Oh, my God. But I also understand when I get out of my flesh what the Constitution say about my future. Yeah. And this is what you should submit to as the potter got his hands on you. Submit to the process. And if you read your Constitution, for those that don't understand, your Constitution is your Bible. My God, these are the bylaws. My God, this is how God governed his kingdom. <laughs> Oh, I'm not preaching to you, church. These are the bylaws to the kingdom. These are the standards, my God. These are the commands, my God, of how God do business in his kingdom. So when you and I line our life up according to the Constitution, I don't want to hear nothing about the Bible's outdated. I don't want to hear about it was wrote for that time, my God. This is the bylaws to the kingdom. God does not operate outside of these bylaws. What you and I have to do is get the revelation concerning the Constitution. See, I say some things you can't take at face value. There's things that God allowed in the Old Testament he won't allow today. Things that he allowed you to have 400 women. Please bring that back. Some of y'all say the devil is a lie. It's hard enough just dealing with one. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Why do you want 400? My God, you stretch yourself thin, my God, when you deal with, with, with 400 women. So he allowed that under the law. But under the New Testament, my God, he say, it's just got to be, I'm going somewhere. One. That's right. And we are two people, but we are one in God's sight. That's right. That's right. So, my God, when, mm, my God, and so when I get out of line, my God, it affects the one. When I'm not in order, it affects the one. When I'm not being the priest, prophet, the king of my home, it affects the one. My God, when I'm not ruling, my God, from a position of victory, my God, I'm affecting the one. When I get mad and punch a hole in the wall because I can't control my anger, I'm affecting the one. See what I'm trying to say? So, imagine if you had 400. Thank you. Thank you. And so it's, I got to take care of the one because my decisions, my God, don't just affect me. Who in my life got to suffer while I remain the same? So my decisions just don't affect my wife. It affect me too. And it affect Naila. It affect Juju and all of my grandkids and all of my in-laws and outlaws. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So your decisions just don't affect you. So quit making decisions based on I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. Everything is permissible. But everything ain't beneficial. Why am I saying all that? Because the potter. Is trying to keep his hands on his people to shape you for your purpose. But there's a process, my God, that the natural potter and the spiritual potter got to go through. Don't make the process more difficult than what it already is. It takes time. Oh, my God, you got to have laser focus when God is trying to mold you and shape you, prepare you for your next. Somebody give God a hand. And so God's main attention in the natural, I mean the spiritual realm, is to get you ready. For your spiritual assignment to bring glory and honor to the Father. Number two, let's look at the ingredients that he used. Yeah, the natural as well as the spiritual father got certain ingredients that they use. Are y'all with me so far? So number B up on the point number uh, one is the, the potter's ingredients. Y'all see that up there? Let's look at these ingredients right here. It says in order to accomplish this goal, the potter must work with materials that leave much to be desired. Watch this. The condition of the clay as it is found. The clay, is, the clay as it is found in the ground is not suitable for use. Don't you know in our former condition we weren't suitable for use? Don't you know if God had not killed himself? <laughs> if God not, had not shed his blood? Don't you know that we could not be in the presence of a holy God? In our former state, my God. Before there was a who, what, when, and where. The person that you was before God saved you, for those that are saved, my God, you and I wasn't usable to the king. Are you with me so far? And so God, 
my God has to take some tools. God has to begin to use some ingredients to prepare us to be meat for the master's use. So he got to take us through a process, a series of events. Are y'all with me so far? Oh, we going so far. He had to use certain tools. He had to allow, my God, certain situations to happen. <laughs> oh, y'all missed that, my God, when you're being crushed. Crushing produces power. Oh, my God, you're not going to have the power if you ain't willing to go through the fire, baby. <laughs> oh, my God, so God is trying to prepare you and I, my God, for where he's taking us, my God. But we, we, when God found us, uh, he already knew where we was when he found us. He knew the mistakes that we had when he found us. Uh, he knew the things you used to do before you got saved. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me so far? And so, my God, it, it is dug, talking about the clay, out of the ground and brought to the vicinity of the pottery and allowed to weather for weeks. The dry material, my God, then is dumped into a cement line tank or a wooden trap and covered with water. I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. When the lumps have softened, they are stirred in the water until they, until they have disintegrated and, and, and into a thin, slimy piece of mud. My God. In other words, the clay, as it is taken from the ground, is useless. It must be transformed into a usable state, my God. And this process takes time and energy on the part of the potter. I'm going to say that right there. So when God first signed us, he got to take us through a series of events, my God, because we're not usable when we first get saved. That's why it's dangerous, my God, when somebody first gets saved, and the first thing you do a week later as leaders and pastors is give them a microphone and tell them to start preaching. Even though they may be called to preach, but they haven't been trained. Because the attack's going to come after you preach. Can you live it out there after you preach it? Come on, somebody. And so, therefore, you got to understand. Let me help you. Let me help you, my God. Now that you are saved, God is trying to prepare you for where you're going. That's why some things that God got to turn his back on and allow you to experience because it's preparation for where you're going. See, I'm trying to say there are certain things that God got to allow to happen in your life because what it does, because when we come to God, our heart is hardened. When we come to God, we got a whole lot of mess, my God, in our lives and in our mind. We got wrong doctrine, my God. We got wrong belief system. We got all the stuff. God got to go up into the attic of your mind and start the process of renovating your mind. God got to help you uncover so you can recover. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So when you get saved, my God, God is trying to make you and I uncover so that he can start the process of recovery. Because when we came to God, we came to God with all these wrong beliefs, all this religion, all these lies that we was taught, my God, growing up in these churches. God said, I got to turn all that down. That takes time and it takes a, pro it's, it's, it's a process. Yeah. What hurts us is that we get frustrated with the process. Yeah. We want the victory without the process. Yeah. We want the platform without the training. Yeah. <laughs> we want the marriage, my God, without the work. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Everybody want to be married, but soon as you go through a trial, you're ready to file for divorce, my God. <laughs> you want the marriage without the preparation that go alone to prepare you yeah. for the marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want kids, but you want to drop them off with your grandma, with the mama. So you, want, you want a husband, but you ain't preparing yourself for a husband. Everything is a process. And so God saved you. Now he's taking you and I through the process. And so, my God, it's critical that you let him keep his hands on you because he's preparing you for the process to become the vessel that he wants you to be. <sighs> See, he, he's working with intentionality. He know what he's doing. He ain't making no mistakes. I, I know you and I may think he's making a mistake. He ain't making no mistake. He, it was good for you and I that we was afflicted. God know what he's doing. You need some haters, my God. Haters give you free advertisement. You need somebody to misunderstand you and talk about you. It's all part of the process. Some of the stuff you're going through is all part of the process. Just submit to the process because he's taking you somewhere. He already know what you're going to become, but he got to take you through the process. Christians don't want to go through nothing. Victory without process. Want a successful marriage, but don't want to forgive one another. Want, 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 want to be a mother, but don't want to raise the kids. Want to be grown, there is no freedom without laws. There is no freedom without rules. I'm grown, I can do what I want to do. The devil is alive, Lord, you got breath in your body, you got to submit to the land. Oh my God, there is. you got to submit to the rules. Yes. In the natural. Read yeah. Romans 13. You got to obey those that's over you. Yes. You got to submit to the governing authorities. You got to submit. You can't just do what you want to do because you grow. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. I know I preach with a little passion. And, but it's the, I'm, I'm trying to. See, God dropped this in me because I'm trying to get you to understand. Lisa, it's, it's, a, it's about the process. 
you need to thank God for the process because remember, remember, this is already created. Everything that we're trying to figure out is on our way to what's already created. That's why we don't understand everything. And he ain't going to tell you everything. He ain't going to show you everything. I promise you, if me and my wife knew what we was going to have to go through in our marriage and we was going to have to go through personally behind birth in the ministry, I promise you we would have said no. And Bishop warned me three times. He said, are you sure you want to be a pastor? You have such a good life, Lawrence. Are you sure? I said, yes. He tried to talk me out of it three times. He told y'all that. And I told my wife, I don't know, a few months ago, if he came to me today. <laughs> oh, I'm going to keep it on the... You don't understand. And see, my God, we starting to just now, after six years of pastor, we are starting to get an understanding of the process. Oh, my God, because the enemy will try to use everything he can to rip, my God, this union apart, my God. You don't understand the price that got to be paid for me to pastor y'all, church. Oh, I got to go through a hell of a price, my God. And my wife, my marriage, my God, don't get me started in this church, my God. Hey! The process. Oh, the process is painful at times. Oh, don't no, baby, no man. I felt that one, baby. The process is painful at times. Oh my God, don't get me started. Ah, oh, the process it ain't always glitz and glamour, baby. Oh Lord, and then even in your life, it's not gonna be glitz and glamour. You're gonna probably have more bad times than you got good time on your way to your job. But you gotta let God keep His hands on you. I can't afford to remove myself from up under the, 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 the hands of God. If I do that, back to the former. Back to the first Adam, the second Adam won't matter. <laughs> if I ever allow him to take his hands off of me, champ, I'm in trouble. See, some, some of y'all, you, you don't take, see, you, you haven't had that revelation uh, uh, to where, uh, stay with me, God. I don't know what my life will be without you, God. I need you every hour of the day. I need you every hour. See, some of y'all ain't got to that revelation yet. Oh, some of you think you got more. I ain't got no more chance. It's the process. So what I go through, I submit to the process because I understand God is preparing me for the destiny. And my destiny is great. My destiny is big, but I got to be molded. I got to be shaped, and so do you. Quit bucking against the process. Why, God? It's okay to say why, but I have to be ready for him to answer your why. Why do I got to go through this? Why do my son got to go through this? When is my son going to get saved? When is my daughter going to change? When do I say, when? You ask these questions. Process. When is my husband going to come? Process. When is my husband going to really love me like I deserve to be loved? Process. I don't want to wait. I've been with him too long. He should already know how to love me. Process. If you are, if God has already showed you what this look like, everything that you got to go through to get this, you'd be like, please, I already know what's going to be the end result. I don't even keep on tripping, keep on, I'm good because you already know. But what gets us as finite human beings, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know if it's going to ever get better. We don't know if it's going to ever turn around. We don't. We could be spiritual, say, I call those things. It's not, I, I speak it by faith. And, and what is for me is for me. Victory is mine because the Bible said it is mine. But, but there's a process to the victory. Uh, he said he's going to turn it around. He is turning around, but you ain't going to turn around that fast. You're going to turn one step. Yeah. Turn. Now, I know I turned real quick, but there's a whole, that may be 10 years before I turn again. It may be 11 years. Before I turn all the way around, it's probably 20 years before I made that full turn. Somebody give God a hand in the church, man. Mm. Process, process. It's flowing. I'm flowing right with God. Right with God. Mm. Uh, so the potter uses, write this down, the first thing. I'm on tile. I just wanted to do it. One point number one. You know, I, I'm still... <laughs> My baby says it just looks sexy on you when you teach. I, I ask that. Don't pay me no mind. It's good on this side. 
I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Now, I said that. It's a lot of pain connected to that. That's the process. process. Talk too fast already. Hallelujah. The process, Lord. Let's try it now. Let's try it now. The process, the process, the process. Ah, right, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the process. Hallelujah. Bring it back. Throw it away and give me a new one. I don't want it. Throw it away and buy me a new one today. Hallelujah. Turn the mic on. I want a new mic. Thank you, Lord. There are certain instruments. There are certain instruments that God, I want a new one today. It seemed like soon as God was finna hit a vein, here come the enemy. See, that's spiritual warfare y'all don't know nothing about. Y'all think that's just technical difficult. The devil is a lie. It's somebody that God was supposed to say something to. They had, my God, God had a key to unlock somebody because of my testimony about this right here was finna get free and the enemy just robbed it. So y'all know what we got to do? We got to stand up and torment the devil for our worship. Amen. I'm still going to take my time. There are several, my God, instruments, church, that God uses to bring the clay to a place of usable. And the instruments are, number one, a shovel. A shovel. This is the tool he uses to dig the clay from the earth. This is a picture of the Spirit of God who comes to where we are in sin and speaks to us in a convict, convicting, powerful way that draws us to Jesus. Oh, I need my lapel. So God uses a shovel. He digging. He's digging. He's digging all around our heart. Because all around our heart, the ground is so hard. And he has to dig. He has to water. He has to send stuff. He got to allow stuff because he's trying to soften the ground that's all around the two, I mean the vessel. Are you with me so far? And so God uses a shovel. So you think about a shovel. A shovel got, goes down and then up. Down and then up. Down and then up. Down and then up. Oh my God. God is digging down. My God. Oh my God. The, the, the deeper the roots, the stronger the tree. So God is digging down, and then he's throwing up. Down, and he's throwing up. Notice that I'm doing a motion. It's all the rhythm. Down, up. But keep, I'm throwing it. See, we are getting stuff on top of us and letting it sit on us. Down, to throw it off. When we pick it up, we let it sit on us. We cover ourselves up with dirt. Shovel has a purpose. God, in the midst of your process, is using certain tools to make you usable so that you can bring certain, so you can bring honor and glory to his name. See, I, I'm, I, I'm going to do that, baby. I'm, I, he, he uses certain tools for the sole purpose. Remember, he already got an idea. He already got the image. He already know what he wants you to become. So he know what tool to use at what time to use it. What trial to sin, what circumstance to go through, how long to allow the situation before he change it. Because in situations, God is teaching. See, God allows situations, my God, I'm teaching you today, to happen because he's trying to teach you a lesson. Because the answer is in the situation. If he don't allow the, answer, the situation, you'll never get the answer. Situations is school. Turbulence is educational. 
Trials is educational. They're informal. God is speaking to you and your answer is in the trial. Your answer is in the, the stirring of the water. My God, see, 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 your for, being formulate, formulated, my God, is in the trial. It's in, my God, the circumstances that you're going through that you don't understand. See, we are missing out on God. God is speaking in the midst of the circumstances, the situation. But we, we see a trial, we see a storm, we see fire, we see problems, and we get away from it. God said, no, no, go back. I'm finna speak to you. Come on, Moses. Moses got his calling. My God, in the midst of the fire, the burning bush. Moses, Moses, take your shoes off, my God. And God spoke to Moses, my God, from the burning bush. His calling, my God. Oh, my God, was in the fire. You got to go to the fire to get your calling. You got to go through the process in hell to get your calling. Oh my God, the fire. Oh, your, your purpose is in the fire. Your answer is in the fire. Quit looking for your answer on the mountain. God does his greatest work in the valley. Valley. Everybody wants the mountain. But the process, the beauty of having a relationship with God is when you look back, I can look back now. There are certain things that me and my wife talk about, we laugh about now. But during that time, it used to bring tears to her. We laugh about how she used to crawl around the house and all these babies up off of there because I'm, mm, oh, and she used to whoop me with a belt to try to get me to stay in the house. I can't get nobody. To stay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We laugh about that stuff now, Barry, but it was a hell of a process when I was going through it. But look at me today. I can't get nobody to, oh, shoot. Hey, hey, process. The very thing that causes so much pain is turned around to bless her. The main one that causes so much hell turned around and give her the world. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. But it was a process. Stuff that made her cry, she laugh about now. Stuff that make you cry, you laugh about if you stay in the process. Oh my God. And so God uses a shovel. God has digged you out. God has snatched you up out of the muck in a married clay. God has dug you out. God has dug you out and God is digging you out. Some of y'all right now, God is still digging out. You haven't came all the way out and God is trying to dig you out and he's using a shovel. Let's look at the next thing. He uses a mallet. Oh my God. He uses a mallet. After the clay has been cleansed and processed, it is placed on a table and beaten with a wooden mallet. Wooden mallet. The potter does this to remove any air bubbles that might be trapped in the clay. If he doesn't, my God, the air bubbles will form a pocket that will produce a weak spot. Oh, oh, that goes back to foundation. See, you can't sidestep the process. Because if you miss once, one step, step leads to increase. Step needs the process. So some of us are trying to do this. I can't do it. Come here, Will. Come here. Come here. Come on, man. Come on. Start right down here and jump from here to here. That looks good. Watch this, though. Stay with me, church. Stay with me. But there's a whole lot of life lessons. One step. Even though he jumped from bottom to top, but he missed the process. And when you love God and you understand that God has good intentions for you, you enjoy the process. Because truth be told, you and I, I and you don't want nothing that we really can't handle. Because if God gave it to you too soon, instead of it blessing you, it then cursed you. See, you got to make sure that you are ready to handle the top level. And so steps leads to process. When you take a step, you take, you're making process and progress. See what I'm trying to say? But God uses a mallet. Think about a mallet. Think about a mallet. The natural potter is beating on the clay, trying to form it, trying to tear it down. Oh, my God, trying to get it pure, trying to clean it up. God, the heavenly potter, is using trials, is using testing, using things you understand, using things you don't understand. You got a, a taskmaster supervisor. You got a hard boss. Your husband is tripping. Your wife is tripping. Your kids are tripping. My God, God uses mallets. God, God, God. That's a physical mallet in the natural. What about the spiritual? Ask yourself, what mallet is God using in my life right now? What mallet? What tool is he using? Because he had to beat it so the clay won't be fragile. It won't be weak. 
Men, you got to go through the process so that you can be strong enough to handle what you believe in asking God for. I'm sorry that neither one of us, a lot of us did not have a physical role model, male, a father in the home to teach us what this thing looked like. And so we have had to learn from broken pieces. When we look in the mirror, we're looking at broken men. See what I'm trying to say? Because we didn't have a Joshua, we didn't have a Moses, some of us didn't, to show us what true fatherhood looks like, how to really love a woman, how to be a good father, how to be a strong provider. You see what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, my God, God will allow the mallet of life, the trials of life, perplexities and situations, because he's trying to smooth us out. So when you get men, a good model in front of you that may not be perfect, but he have a lot of tools that you need, that you can draw from his tool belt. See, because see, your pastor got a tool belt. And I got a whole lot of tools for different situations. See, I'm trying to say in the spiritual realm, I got a whole lot of tools because different trials, different situations, different circumstances require a different tool. See, I can't use a shovel for everything. I can't use a mallet for everything. Oh, my God, that's why it's so close to be, that's why it's so important to be accountable, my God, to someone because there's different tools that you have access at when you are accountable. So some of the men, you got to come a little bit closer. First to God and then to the natural people that God have in your life that, my God, is free in the areas that you're struggling with. So God will use people. You tell people, I don't need to be accountable to nobody. I don't need nobody in my life. What you're doing, you're disqualifying and holding up the process. God brought many of you here, my God, so you can get in the process. God brought you here so, so, so the Spirit of God can show you how to work out and walk out the process. That's why we got classes. That's why we got Monday night discipleship. That's why we have things in place because it helps you walk out the process so that you won't be weak Christians. The vision called foundation works on your foundation. That's the infrastructure of your life. You, if the foundation is weak, you can't put no weight on a weak foundation. You want everything from heaven, but God said, I can't get, drop no weight on you. Your foundation is too cracked. It's too fragile. You get offended too easy. You don't got no study life. You don't pray like you're supposed to. You pick and choose when you come to me. See, when you come to church when you want to, when you read your Bible when you want to, when you pray when you want to, when you forgive if you want to, see, you're fragile. See what I'm trying to say? Uh, 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 when, you, when, you, when, you, when you have formulated an institution in your mind, when you try to compromise the scriptures, when you try to negotiate with the God who made the scriptures, my God, you, see, you're fragile. When you always talking yourself out of your future, when you always telling yourself that you can't, when you let fear dominate you instead of faith propel you, you're, you're, you're fragile. There's such thing as healthy fear and there's such thing as bad fear. You can't let your faith, I mean your fear, dominate your future. See what I'm trying to say? If you can't, my God, take the bull by the horn, my God, oh my God, my God, my God, my God, you're disqualifying yourself, you're fragile. If you can't show up to church on time, you're fragile. If you don't read your Bible, you're fragile. I'm trying to help you, church. This stuff is important. Because why am I saying that? Because reading the Constitution builds you, gives you strength. The Bible said, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Oh, my God. The Bible, reading the Word of God, my God, builds up that power, builds up that strength. It removes all the bubbles. It removes all the fragileness in a person's life. So when the devil strikes, you'll strike back. When you go through trials, you don't quit. Come on. You'll stand up, my God, and say, the devil, you is a lie. You're not going to let the lion come in and snatch your kids out of your home. You're going to go after the lion and kill the lion, my God, because you're a warrior. Come on, somebody. Oh, I can't get no amens in that because, see, a lot of us don't like to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fragile. We quit too quick. Oh, we quit too quick. Oh, I'm trying to finish. We quit too quick. God said, I got to send you through this. And I got to allow this because I'm trying to keep you, get, I'm trying to get you strong. We too fragile as Christians. Let God keep his hands on you. Let God use the shovel. Let God use the mallet. Watch this. My God. The herb bubbles, if it's herb bubbles in your life, in the natural, in the parlor, it, it, it makes it weak. I'm going to leave that alone. I just touched on that. My God. Also, my God, when, when we ain't forming right, when we're not going through the process right, uh, uh, we become very unstable. We're not dependable. That's the natural side of the vase. Let's look at the spiritual side. How dependable are you to God? Can God count on you? Will you show up and go where God tell you to go? He said, I'm going to speak to you or whatever. Will you be there when it gets time? Because truth be told, he's all knowing, all 
ever present. So he's already there. He's just waiting on you and I to get there. God is already in your future. He just wants you to accept your future. Mm, 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 I'm about to. Oh, my God. This is a picture also, too, my God, of the mallet. My God, the picture of trials, calamities, and chastisements of life that tend to work together to shape us in the image. Let me, I'm about to, listen to that. Listen to what the Spirit of God gave me. Trials, chastisements, circumstances, situations. All that is shaping you and preparing you. That's process. All of us right now are going through some type of manifold trial. We're dealing with circumstances and situations. But we are mishandling the tools that God is trying to use, my God, in the process to prepare us for our destiny. We're going through stuff because we want it to change now. My God, instead of us, my God, speaking to the rock, we hitting the rock. Come on, Moses. God said, speak to the rock. Moses got angry at the people, and the people made him angry. So instead of him speaking, he smacked the rock. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all should be speaking to your situation, but you hitting it. You're using a mallet to hit the rock instead of speak to the rock. That's revelational right there. You got to speak to your situation by faith and then be patient enough to wait on God to change it. Quit smiting the rock and speak to the rock. Oh, my God. Moses disqualified himself from going into the kingdom because he did the opposite of what God told him to do. God said, speak, and he smited it. He did it because he got angry at the people. I know what that's like. Oh, my God, that's why I got to constantly say, God, don't let me get bitter at the people. That's why I thank God for the process, learning how to handle this microphone, this pool pit, and this responsibility. It could be angry in turn, but don't let the people know it. Yeah. By preaching at them and preaching down to them. See, I always tell me that. Encourage them, but keep it on the dollar. But, yeah, Moses got mad at the people. He said, Ugh! And it cost him going into the free promised land. Is your anger, is your anger, are you smiting the rock instead of speaking to the situation? Are you punching holes in the walls instead of repenting and asking for forgiveness? Uh, are you cussing your children out because he didn't call you on Father's Day because you ain't picked him up in five years, but you're going to cuss him out when he do call? That's smiting the rock. You're disqualifying yourself from entering into the promised land. Oh, I'm trying to help the people. Oh, this is a cold calling. A mallet, let me get through. A mallet is trials, calamities, and circumstances. Are y'all with me so far? As well as chastisement. Don't you know it was good for me? The Bible says a man that accepts correction, it will prosper his soul. But to reject it, you condemn yourself. You need somebody to correct you. You need somebody to tell you the truth. Oh, my God, I don't want to go there. You need somebody to help you along the way. 2 Corinthians, write this down. I want to finish this and get y'all out of here. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for our present trouble. Present trouble. How many of y'all facing any trouble? Raise your hand. Come on, if you're facing any type of trouble, let me see your hand. Make a declaration because this word is going to bring deliverance. Are you facing any type of trouble? Let me go over here because some people are self-righteous. Because if you're being effective for the king, you should be dealing with some trouble. If you're praying, you should be dealing with some trouble. See, you'll say, that's not true. The devil is a lie because the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. And if you're not being effective, he ain't worried about you. If you're not causing trouble in the natural, he ain't worried about you. The Bible says when Paul and Peter then went into the place, my God, they said, here come these troublemakers. I want to be known as a troublemaker to the devil. Whenever I show up, here come trouble. Whenever I show up, here come somebody that's going to turn the world upside down. I want to be known as a troublemaker straight to the kingdom of darkness. I want the enemy to fear me. I want people to understand when you come in my presence, you're coming into a real, true man of God. Ah, yes, I want to be a troublemaker. Do I got any troublemakers in the house? My God. Mm. I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and finish this. But it says, our present troubles are small. Ooh, they small. And won't last very long. Now, y'all say, okay, now, Pastor, now, see, you really don't know my story. And you really don't know how long I've been going through this and dealing with this. But a thousand days is one day to God. A thousand days is a long time to be in the midst of a trial. In the natural, a thousand days. But in the spiritual realm, it's just one day. He says, they won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them all. And it won't last forever. 2 Corinthians 4.17 
We may not like the pounding, church, of the mallet, but its sole purpose is to make us more usable and pliable in the potter's hand. We don't like it, it's painful. Write this last thing down, the wheels. A large bottom wheel, usually made of stone, is mounted upon a shaft that sits in a stone socket. Coming out of this large stone is an upright shaft, y'all, listen to this, that extends some three feet with another smaller wheel mounted on top. The potter is using the feet, church, to spin the large lower wheel. As he does, the upper wheel is turning. This is his hands upon it and shaping it according to his will. Talking about the vessel. These wheels are symbolic of circumstances and situations that life brings our way. We must remember that the potter controls the speed of the wheels. And it's in control. Regardless of what you and I are facing in life, all these things are eventually going to, all things are eventually going to work out in his will. God is controlling the speed, the speed of the wheel. God is controlling the circumstances. God is controlling the trials. God tells you and I when to come up out of the circumstances, when to come up out of the trial. He know how long to keep you and I there. Can you write this down? God has absolute power over the clay. Absolute power over the clay. Write this down. He can make any type of vessel he pleases. Is it a president in her again? Is it the next first lady? Is the, the doctor that has the cure for cancer sitting in her? Is the man, a woman, a child that has the key to cause an AIDS to be cured sitting in her? What vessel do you want to become? The destiny of the clay or the vessel is in God's hand. Write that down. The destiny of the clay or the vessel is in God's hand. God's hand should be all over your life. So we got to ask ourselves this afternoon as we laid that foundation. It would help you in the process that you are on if you can say, God, what tool are you using in my life at this present time? Paul says do a self-examination. So you and I got to examine and say, is it a hammer? Is it a mallet? Is it a screwdriver? Some of us has lost their minds. We got to screw us back on. Come on, something. Is it a doctor's scalpel? Is it a surgical scalpel? Is it a Phillips? Is it a jackhammer? Is it a bulldozer? Is it a dump truck? I'm being serious. What tool, what weapon, what is God using to formulate you into the vessel that will bring him honor? Not when you get to heaven, but while you're here on earth. I need us to stop and think about that as I get ready to close. I'm going to say like, come on up here, uh, 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 Christian, please. Ask yourself, what tool is God using? Because you may be in a season where he's using a hammer, and then next week he'll use a screwdriver. Think about a screw. Look at me, y'all. A screwdriver. You turn it. What needs to be turned in your life? What needs to be turned? What needs to be screwed on tighter? Is it your prayer life? Is it your study life? Do God need to unlock the bitterness, the offenses, the frustration? What to? Is God's hand even on you? I'm in church, but you got to ask, is God's hand on your life because many of us will tell ourselves yeah but it don't feel like it 
That may be true. And I want to say this to you. Just because it don't feel like it, don't mean God's hand ain't on your life. Sometimes God got to allow you to go through that stuff because it's part of the process. Jesus had to die on the cross and God had to turn his back on him because it was part of the process. What frustrates us and cause us to get impatient with the process is that we want instantaneously results. We don't want to pay a price for nothing. We want victory without process. We want fame without work. We want promotion without surrendering. Every head bow. Just laying the foundation. Flow a little bit different. But I give God the glory. If you heard this afternoon, and you ain't never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you need God's hands, and you really want God's hands on your life, and God has said something, God has said something, God has said something, and you ready to give your life to Christ. You know you're not saved. If that's you, raise your hand. If it's anybody that want to give their life to Christ, that means accept God as capital L-O-R-D in your life and truly be forgiven. Because in order for the process to start in your life, you have to be forgiven. Remember the shovel digs you out. This is God trying to dig you out right now. This is the spirit of the living God trying to dig you out right now. Is it anyone that never have given their life to Christ? Please, don't miss this opportunity because I can promise you tomorrow is not promised. I'm saying that because the Bible says tomorrow is not promised. Is it anybody? If you are here, did you raise your hand, son? Come on down. Come on down. Put him by her. How about she get up? Is it any other person in her that has never accepted Jesus and wants to accept Jesus? You know you're on the outside. And you want to give it to God. Your bank account may be full. You may have gas in your car. You may have your house with the white picket fence. And you may have some 401k. But the Bible says, why well, gain the world but lose your soul? Anybody? I love you enough to sit for a second. I thank God for the courage of this young man. My God, get up, our sheep, get up. Yeah, you had a real encounter with God today, son. Yes, and it's okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God, I thank you for this encounter. Oh, my God, God has spoke to this baby. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From this day forward, you will no longer do church. You're going to do Christ. my God are you ready to do Christ if that's you come are you ready to do Christ not church come who ready to do Christ come they're coming who ready to do Christ and not church your deliverance is tied to your relationship in Christ the Bible says you don't start living because your life is hidden in Christ book of Colossians who wants life who wants Christ today who wants Christ today who needs restoration? Who need God to put his hands on them? Who's saying, that's me right there. You spoke to me today, God. I got some areas where I'm fragile at. I, I got some areas where, where I'm not always submitted to you at. I got some areas where I need to allow you to come in and have your way, my God. If that's you, my God, I, I'm one of those that's making excuses. I'm the one of those that's always blaming. I'm one of those, my God, that'll always come to church. I don't read my Bible. I don't pray. My God, I don't try to witness for Christ. I don't want anybody to know I'm a Christian, my God. Oh, my God, is that you? Is that you? Is that you? I'm one of those men that when I get angry, instead of me facing what I need to face, my God, I punch a hole in the wall. 
I'll make the wrong phone call. Oh my God. If that's you, you ought to be down here. Oh my God. If you just need God to touch you, not because you are out of order, but you want God to touch you, you should be down here. Step in the river. Oh my God. Get in the habit of coming to the presence of the Lord. Oh my God. Don't allow the enemy to make you sit in your seat. Yes, God can speak to you in your seat, but it's something when you make a bold statement to the enemy and say, you know what? I ain't sitting in my seat. I'm getting dumped and I'm coming down here. My God, because this is real kingdom business this afternoon. They coming. They coming. My God, who is God talking to all over the sanctuary? Do you want God to put his hands on you? Do you need God to put his hands on you? What do you need God to do in your life? Today is the day of salvation. Choose this day. Choose this day. What do you need to give to the Lord?